Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Liana. I'm a clicker trainer and rabbit behaviorist. I am rabbit mum to two highly trained house bunnies, Peppercorn and Wallace. We are the Bunnies Brigade and we're here to get people rethinking rabbit care. Today, I want to talk about bunny proofing. I'm standing in the entryway of my apartment right now because I figured the best way to talk about bunny proofing is take you around my apartment and show you our bunny proofing solutions. Hopefully it will give you some inspiration, but also I hope it helps very new or prospective rabbit mums and dads understand what bunny proofing really entails. Before I start showing you around, be keeping in mind what a rabbit wants. Hey, I've got a video on that actually. A rabbit aspires for an obstruction-free space in order to feel their safest and most comfortable. They want to be able to see as much as they can all around them and they want to be able to make a smooth and speedy getaway to a safe space at any moment, whether that safe space be a hidey house, tunnel, litter box or enclosure. Obstruction-free means that items on the floor, especially where they wouldn't normally be, will be seen to as will those things, they're a bit too low overhead. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is my shoe cabinet. I love this shoe cabinet. Most of our shoes are kept in here, hidden away and off the ground. I know some people do have problems with their bunnies nibbling at their shoes. Well, this is your solution. Keep them out of the way in something like this. Or perhaps some sort of storage contraption, uh, maybe a closet. Pepper and Wally don't actually care much for our entryway area. They don't really see it as their territory. So this isn't actually a big issue for us. I honestly just keep my shoes out of sight for my own reasons. So also in this area, we have a lamp. This lamp's moved around a little and I originally bought it to fit elsewhere. So the base doesn't really fit perfectly in here, excuse that. But that's just me being a perfectionist and really not the point. The point is, of course, coming out of a lamp is a wire and that wire needs to run to a plug socket. With this particular lamp, this wire comes from underneath the base and you can see I've tucked the base a little bit under the sofa and that's all deliberate because the wire goes underneath the sofa and plugs into an extension lead that travels to an outlet behind the sofa over there. We're also able to use this handy concealed extension lead to plug in Christmas decorations if we want them in this vicinity. Now a few words about this sofa. Our choice of sofa was not made without consideration for our rabbits. Not to say that we couldn't get what we wanted, we definitely did get exactly what we wanted, but if you are in the market for a sofa, it's my recommendation to find one that's either too low for your rabbits to get under, like ours, that way you can use this space underneath to vanish your cables, or you can find one that's super high off the ground. What you don't want is a sofa that's height sits anywhere in between, as your rabbit might have the desire to chew at it in an attempt to give themselves more headroom and easier access to the cozy under the sofa burrow. Now moving on, here is our office area. Unfortunately, we live in a one bed apartment and have to make do with this small area as our office. With an office comes a lot of cables. And if you do have a large enough home where you have a dedicated room for your office, you may just want to restrict your rabbit's access completely and avoid the hassle. You can use a pet gate if you don't want to close the door. Just make sure the gate has close enough bars and your rabbit isn't able to slip themselves underneath it. So. On our desk, I have a printer that obviously has a cable and our all important charging station. Now, let's talk about chargers for a sec. Chargers. They are the most likely household item to fall victim to our bunnies because they can really slice through these cables in a second. No chewing necessary. They're also always moving around, plugged in wherever they need to be to serve our phone or laptop usage. But to your rabbit, they just appear in different places, like there's some kind of plant that's become a little too overgrown, and therefore, a little housekeeping is required to tidy it up. I've heard of rabbit owners ordering phone chargers on repeat subscriptions, so they've always got a replacement coming when their rabbit 
according to them, inevitably cuts it to pieces. I think that's all a bit silly though, when you can avoid the issue with a well bunny proofed charging station. And when I say well bunny proofed, I mean these cables are so well protected that it will be time consuming to remove them from the wall. This area is our main station where we can easily plug in and charge. We also have another station for just our phones in the bedroom. Of course, we're not limited to only charging at a station. If we want to charge and continue to use our devices anywhere else in the apartment, our sofa for example, then we have floating chargers for that. And when it comes to protecting the floating chargers, it really is just getting into the habit of putting them away once you've finished charging, and certainly before you leave the room. And regardless of whether you're there to watch it or not, absolutely avoid laying it across the floor. I do understand this goes against the way any non-rabbit person would conventionally use a charger, but as I say, it's a habit that once you form, you will like, you will have a mild freak out whenever you're in someone else's home and you see exposed wires on the floor. I certainly do. Yes, I have lost two or three chargers in myself over the years. It is a learning curve. So be patient with yourself and others in your household as you form this new habit. And look, if you disagree with all of this because you feel it is allowing your life to be dictated too much by a rabbit, then by all means, Set up a subscription order for phone chargers if that's what you want. Lecture over. Now, let me show you what my charging station consists of and how I've bunny proofed it. I have a USB-C cable for our laptops, a lightning charger for our phones, and also a micro USB that we have for any guests who might have an Android. We also have a few things around the house that need charging via micro USB. All the chargers are held above the desk with the help of this. This is a quirky cordy. It kind of pinches the cables sort of pinches them and has room to hold extra if I wrap them around like I have done with the USB-C here. The transformer for the laptop charger is tucked neatly behind the printer and the printer wire is also coiled up nicely behind there as well. All of these cables run down under the desk to the outlet below where I have one of these genius covers over the socket. I love these things. It's actually meant for the purpose of preventing small children from playing with a plug socket, but what I find very useful is it has all this room inside that will hold excess wire. This is obviously for American outlets, but I have seen something similar for UK plug sockets. I'm not sure about Europe and Australia, but I would guess similar products can be found. Also underneath the desk here, you can see I have a cable tidy encasing the wires. To be honest though, this this is just me being obsessively tidy, it's completely unnecessary as there's no way Pepper or Wally could ever reach this high and certainly not to get to cables that aren't even in their way. So that's our charging station, I hope that's given you some inspiration. Now moving on to the living room. And whilst we're on the subject of chargers, here's one of our floating phone chargers just sitting on the coffee table there. And this is a clever little solution I came up with for charging whilst we're chilling on the sofa. I mentioned earlier there's an outlet behind the sofa. So I ran a second extension cable from that and it comes out here and feeds around the back of the sofa cushion so we can pull it out when we need it and just plug it in or hide it away out of sight when we don't need it. Now. Turning to another big one that everyone has to tackle, the TV or entertainment center. That's what they like to call it at electronic stores, isn't it? But hands down, the best way to deal with this lot is to simply choose a TV unit that has doors and there's plenty to choose from. Ours is from Ikea, it's their best arranged and we got the bookshelves along with it. I perhaps should have gotten the taller version of the unit because Peppa did need a little training to stop her from wanting to jump up onto it. So I'd recommend keeping the height of your unit in mind if you want to avoid any of that. You can see I've used cable tidies to protect the wires on top of the unit. It's just a safeguard in case Peppa randomly decides to be naughty. Inside the unit is everything. Our modem, our router, and the collection of 
embarrassing the old games consoles we have. All plugged in to the Surge Protector power strip here. Now I have linked this power strip in the description because it has a flat plug. If you're in the US, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I'm guessing it's a similar situation in Europe as well. Flat plugs are important. The extension cord I showed you over by the sofa and the one for the lamp also have flat plugs. You've got to make sure you can get your furniture nice and close up against the wall. You do not want inquisitive bunnies thinking they found a nice burrow-like space behind your furniture. In the case that you do not have a plug socket where you have your TV like we do, then you'll want a Raceway cable management kit. This here is actually our internet cable that our service provider literally ran across the entire living room years ago. Seriously, it starts at the front door and ends up over here. Fortunately, most of it is behind furniture, but it's exposed right here. So I use these raceway covers. The cable slots into it and it adheres to the wall. The kits always come with little corner pieces and connecting pieces if you have a super long cable. Now I found the adhesive that come with these isn't fantastic and where I have used these they always ended up peeling off the wall but I replaced all the sticky with command strips and it's been holding up great. There are also versions of these cable management kits that you can screw onto the wall so that's up to you if you want to make sure it's really nice and secure of course then you'll have some really lovely holes in your wall so. Now into the bedroom where we have the most carefully crafted complex bunny proofing I have ever achieved. Like honestly, I should get some kind of medal for this. If you saw our video on how to stop destructive behavior, then you'll remember I mentioned that we got a new bed some time ago. So this is the story. We did not go out and buy a new bed just for Pepper and Wally. We actually needed a new mattress. It was stupidly old. I, I'd had it since I was a student and it was giving me neck problems. Anyway, when we went to buy a new one at the bed shop, <laughs> they offered to throw in a bed frame with it for a little extra. Now, that bed frame was actually an electric bed frame. It remotely raises and lowers, all very fun. But you can imagine what's going through my head thinking about the rabbits, so. There I was, in the middle of this store, trying to crawl underneath the display bed to work out whether it was possible to bunny-proof this thing. Well, turns out it is. This took us the better part of a day to go out and buy the bunny-proofing supplies we needed and then work through a section of wires at a time until we turn this thing into what you could say looks like what you'd find under the bonnet of a car. We used this type of cable tidy, which is thicker and offers better protection than those cable tidies you saw under the desk and behind the TV. We also used this tubing that you'll be able to find in the plumbing aisles of your hardware store. You have to carefully cut a slit lengthways along it with a utility knife so that you can get the cable inside. Then we used a whole load of cable ties to secure everything so it just became part of the frame. And that took some doing to make sure that we weren't restricting the bed's range of movement. The cable that plugs into the wall feeds along here and I've kept it nice and high by attaching it to the wall with more of that raceway cable cover. This is bunny proofed well enough that Pepper and Wally free roam in this room every night while we're asleep. I don't worry about them causing any damage to anything in this room, not only because of the effort we put in under the bed, but because of the training I've done with them. And I really do recommend you watch that video next if you haven't already. It's linked in the card above and in the description below. I hope by showing you what I've done with the bed, I've proven that there's not a lot that can't be bunny-proofed. Now, just a couple more things to show you in here.
We have another lamp in the bedroom, which is very different from the one by our door. The wire for this one comes down from the top. I just wrapped it many times around the leg at a good height here, so it doesn't ever droop down and it plugs into that socket nice and taut. This is actually probably the most exposed wire in the house, but it's high enough that Pepper and Wally don't even notice it. We also have that second charging station that I was talking about for our phones. It's literally just a very long lightning cable that runs behind this dresser and into the outlet that's down the side here. The dresser is as close to that corner as these plugs will allow. This plug is actually the charger for my handheld vac, by the way, which I use to vacuum up any stray poops every morning. Although hay does easily clog this thing. If you've made it this far, I know that showing you all of this could seem overwhelming. If it's not clear by now, I'm kind of house proud. And there's an element to all of this, all this bunny proofing that satisfies me and how I like to keep my home anyway. I honestly love that my pets hold me accountable and keep me on top of the tidying. You know, we're all different and I understand that bunny proofing, especially to this extent, can feel like an unreasonable ask if you're someone who likes a more carefree lifestyle. This video is just meant to give ideas. Some simple, some not so simple. Then it's up to you to what extent to take your bunny proofing. How bothered are you by the damage to your possessions? After all, these things come with the territory of any pet ownership. What is most important is you're keeping your rabbits from chewing through live wires or ingesting things they shouldn't. Leave a comment below if you have any bunny proofing situations that are leaving you stumped. Maybe we can find a solution together. As always, like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff that helps support our channel. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.